It's my pleasure to introduce this first presentation, How Future-Focused Logistics and Infrastructure Will Enhance Antarctic Science, by Stuart Gibson and Adrian Young from the Australian Antarctic Division. Hi there, my name's Stuart Gibson, Davis Aerodrome Project Manager at the Australian Antarctic Division. And I'm Adrian Young, Strategic Infrastructure Manager at the Australian Antarctic Division. A modern devastation supported by an aerodrome offering year-round access will create significant opportunities for research and allow scientists to investigate new and more ambitious questions in a more thorough and innovative way, propelling Antarctic science forward and opening areas of investigation for future generations. The Australian Government is committed to the, de the delivery of a modern Antarctic programme that enables Australia to continue to lead a world-class science programme. In 2016, the Government released the Australian Antarctic Strategy and 20-Year Action Plan, which sets out a roadmap for our engagement with the continent and committed to investigating year-round access between Australia and Antarctica. In 2018, the Government announced its intention to construct an aerodrome near Davis Research Station to support year-round access to Antarctica, subject to environmental approvals under two pieces of Australian legislation. The proposed Davis Aerodrome has been assessed under the Antarctic Treaty Environment Protection Act, which implements the Protocol on Environmental Protection to the Antarctic Treaty. It has also been assessed under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act, which provides a legal framework for activities that have been significant on the environment and any which are to be carried out by the Australian Government Agency. The Comnat Antarctic Roadmap Challenges Report, released in 2016, outlines the multiple benefits of expanded year-round access to the continent an expansion of flights and access to deep field sites within the continent. If approved, the Davis Aerodrome will deliver exactly this, overcoming one of the most significant barriers facing the Antarctic community and enabling Antarctic scientists to focus on answering the critical questions of global significance for generations to come. In 2019, the Australian Government committed funding of $450 million to upgrade Australia's network of Antarctic research stations and supporting infrastructure. The Australian Antarctic Division has now commenced master planning for the modernisation of Davis Research Station as well as Wilkins Aerodrome. Mawson and Casey stations will undergo similar planning processes in the future. At Davis, the master plan is a roadmap for the long-term infrastructure development that will guide the redevelopment of the station. This will ensure upgraded stations can support the future of science and operational activities of the Australian Antarctic program for decades to come. The AAD has engaged consultants WSP and well-known Antarctic architect Hugh Broughton to support us in developing the initial master plan concepts. The master plan and concept designs have drawn on the outcomes of a comprehensive and collaborative stakeholder engagement process. A range of principles have been developed to guide the master plan and we have focused on ensuring the final master plan of the station will enhance health and safety and wellbeing promote and facilitate world-leading science, represent Australia in Antarctica, lead environmental protection, showcase holistic sustainability, and provide future flexibility. In developing a master plan, the Australian Antarctic Division is considering the future requirements of Davis Station with the proposed Davis Aerodrome. This reviews the infrastructure required to support both the construction workforce and 
the long-term operation of Davis and the aerodrome. Importantly, this work is being developed to inform the aerodrome's environmental assessment submission. Work to stabilise Davis's existing station infrastructure is underway that would upgrade ageing infrastructure and increase station capacity from 90 to 120. Separately, assessment of the infrastructure needs to enable the construction of the aerodrome to commence is being developed. The Davis Aerodrome Project Enabling Works and Associated Environmental Assessment is assuming a total station population increase from 120 to approximately 250. The Antarctic Division estimate a combined construction and operational workforce of around 250 will be required to build the aerodrome and we envisage work will occur year round. The stabilisation works will address issues around the existing condition and capacity. These works are scheduled to take place over the coming summer seasons. For the enabling works, with additional upgrades to the station power, water, wastewater services and accommodation increase, will be needed to support the additional population. It's envisaged stabilisation and enabling works may take up to seven years to complete. The final master plan provides the long-term accommodation for the Antarctic Division at Davis Station and will deliver on the principles I mentioned earlier. Once the aerodrome is operational, Davis Station will become a major logistics and research hub in East Antarctica. The station will need to provide suitable accommodation, transport and logistics for a range of expeditioners, including scientists transi transitioning to other stations and into the deep field. A final decision on the requirements and timing of the delivery of a modernised Davis station depends on whether the Davis Aerodrome is approved to proceed. If approved, the final construction of a modernised station will follow the construction of the aerodrome. If it is not approved, then delivery of a new modernised station will be earlier. After three field seasons of geotechnical and environmental investigations, the Australian Antarctic Division has identified a suitable site for a runway in the Westfold Hills region of East Antarctica, approximately six kilometres from Davis Research Station. The Westfold Hills is a rectangular area of rounded rocky hills that are predominantly ice-free and cover an area of approximately 410 square kilometres. The footprint of the proposed aerodrome would be approximately 2 square kilometres. The project proposes a 2.7 kilometre paved runway which would be capable of accommodating existing and future large passenger aircraft capable of return flight from Australia without the need to refuel. It is envisaged that the runway would be constructed from precast concrete panels manufactured in Australia and shipped to Antarctica where they would be assembled on site. These pavers would measure approximately 5 metres by 3 metres and be around 250 millimetres thick. Transporting 11,500 pavers weighing up to 10 tonnes each via ship will be a significant undertaking, as will the logistics of transporting the workforce and equipment to and from Antarctica. We're exploring opportunities to undertake pavement trials to test design and construction elements. Where practical, for the associated buildings, modular and prefabricated techniques would be used to minimise construction site time. A 4.5 kilometre two-way unsealed access road would provide access from Davis Research Station to the Davis Aerodrome site during construction and throughout the operational life of the aerodrome. Construction of the access road and aerodrome requires more than 3 million cubic metres of earthworks, which would include a balanced cut and fill, which means there would be no need to create a new quarry or dispose of surplus materials. 
A new wharf would be required to support ship-to-shore transfer of plant, equipment and materials, including the concrete pavers. The current proposal is for a floating roll-on, roll-off wharf with a lift-off capacity. If the aerodrome is approved to go ahead, stabilisation and enabling infrastructure would be first required to support the construction and the construction of the aerodrome would then commence, taking up to 10 years to complete. It is anticipated that aerodrome would be operational around 2040. The proposed aerodrome is a six to seven hour flight time from Hobart. It is envisaged that the Davis Aerodrome would become Australia's primary year-round intercontinental and intracontinental aviation hub. The Davis Aerodrome would be used for intercontinental flights from Australia and these would be conducted by aircraft under the charter of the Australian Antarctic Programme or by the Australian Government. Australia would offer available ca capacity on chartered aircraft for passengers and cargo to support ongoing collaborative arrangements with other national Antarctic programmes. While the Davis Aerodrome won't accept intercontinental flights from other nations, it will offer support for intra or internal flights, as is currently the case at Wilkins Aerodrome. Wilkins Aerodrome would continue to support Casey Research Station in the summer season. To meet the forecast demand for expedition transport, we envisage that between October and May, there would be three intercontinental flights per month to Davis, carrying around 30 to 50 expeditioners. We would expect to see up to 80 expeditioners on early season flights. We envisage monthly flights in winter, June through to October, and up to 10 heavy lift cargo flights undertaken by the, the Royal Australian Air Force across the year. We are also considering need for winter helicopters and fixed wing aircraft on the continent to support year round operations. To build on the work undertaken by the SCARS Science Horizon Scan in 2014 and the COMNAP Antarctic Roadmap Challenges Report in 2016, the AD hosted a series of science workshops to explore how improved logistics can help scientists answer questions of global significance. Australia's Antarctic science community outlined an ambitious agenda for the future of Antarctic research when considering the benefits of more regular and reliable access to Antarctica. The Future Science Opportunity Synthesis Report is, on, is a 20-page summary of the workshop outcomes and is available on the AAD's website. In closing, we'd like to extend an open invitation to discuss any of the information we've shared in this presentation. We were very much looking forward to welcoming you to Hobart and providing these updates in person and engaging in productive conversations. However, don't hesitate to contact us if you'd like to learn more about anything you've heard in this presentation. We would welcome the opportunity to talk further about these exciting developments.